Today on the newscast, as the world's attention is fixated on Ukraine, Russia is making major moves in the Middle East. Learn about the massive naval drill that Russia is about to kick off at Israel's doorstep. That's next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It's unclear right now where exactly the Russia-Ukraine crisis is heading. Now, Russia, of course, has some 130,000 troops massed on its border with Ukraine. But today, Russian President Vladimir Putin seemed to strike a more diplomatic tone. He said he wants to give negotiations with the West another chance. Now, is that just a ruse, a head fake by Vladimir Putin? That is unclear right now. There is a very good chance that Russia could indeed invade Ukraine any day now, at least according to Western officials. But in the meantime, as the world's attention is fixated on Russia and Ukraine, Russia is making major moves in the Middle East right now at Israel's doorstep. Some of the largest moves we've seen from Russia in that region since the Cold War. Before I get into it, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman Newscast right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new update is posted. Hey, we've been posting a lot of updates about the Russia situation lately and the broader Russian objectives. What exactly does Vladimir Putin want? It appears that the Middle East is central to his global and strategic aims to revive the glory days of the Soviet empire today. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogai is in Syria meeting with Syrian dictator and Russian ally Bashar al-Assad and informing him that Russia is about to kick off its largest naval exercises in the eastern Mediterranean since the Cold War. That's right, Russian warplanes, nuclear-capable bombers, fighter jets, uh, with hypersonic missiles in tow are now in Syria and Russia is about to kick off these massive drills, a show of force in the Middle East, obviously at Israel's doorstep. Now, a few more details from you, just going to read from this Times of Israel piece, the breaking details really here, folks. Again, as we're fixated on the Eastern European theater, Russia making major moves in the Middle East, the most strategic and volatile region in the world at the same time. The Defense Ministry of Russia said the exercise in the Eastern Med involves 15 warships and about 30 aircraft and is part of a series of sweeping naval drills that started last month amid the Ukraine standoff. Now, long-range, nuclear-capable Tu-22M3 bombers and MiG-31 fighter jets carrying the latest Kinzhal hypersonic cruise missiles. We've talked a lot about those hypersonic missiles recently here in the newscast when it comes to China, North Korea. We know Russia has them as well. Now they are in Syria, again, at Israel's doorstep. They landed at the Russian air base, I hope I pronounced this right, of Hemaimim in Syria's coastal province of Latakia as part of the drills. These Kinzhal hypersonic missiles have a range of up to 1,250 miles and Shogai, the Russian defense minister, said he envisions this drill uh, seeing Russia target, at least mock targets, of enemy warships. Now, according to all the reporting on this, it's just, again, emerging today. This is breaking news. This is a message uh, that Russia can strike the U.S. carrier group in the region. Uh, but are there broader implications for this? Are there prophetic implications for Russia's move uh, first, some backdrop against this massive military drill, the largest in decades, conducted by Russia in the shadow of the Middle East in the Mediterranean. At first, we know that last month, Russian and Syrian fighter jets conducted drills and overflights over Syria's borders, including along Israel's Golan Heights. That's number one. Alarm bells went off there, conducting patrols right along the Golan and secondly, we reported this on Friday, last Friday's newscast. You can check it out here in our archives. A Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman said last week that Israel needs to stop its airstrikes against Iran and Iranian allies like Hezbollah in Syria. Now remember, Russia has thousands of troops. Obviously, as we are reporting right now in real time, a growing 
rapidly military presence in Syria, in the heart of the Middle East. And this foreign ministry spokeswoman said, hey, uh, Russia, Russia is there and we don't like what Israel is doing. She said that Israel is conducting a crude, I'm quoting, a crude violation of Syria's sovereignty by striking Iran and Hezbollah in Syria. Again, as Russian troops are kind of standing off to the side and watching this unfold, now the former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the current Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, have reportedly had agreements with Vladimir Putin to operate freely inside Syria. Putin has stood aside and allowed this to happen, even though his allies in Syria, like Assad, like the Iranian regime, like Hezbollah, have taken heavy blows courtesy of Israeli fighter jets over the past few years. There are There is a sense now, and there are signs, that that may be coming to an end. Perhaps Israel's ability to move freely in Syria is coming to a close as Russia seems to be putting its foot down, so to speak. And now the Russian military buildup in Syria. Folks, I don't think there's any other way to describe it when you have nuclear-capable bombers and fighter jets carrying hypersonic cruise missiles now at Israel's doorstep, courtesy of a massive military power, a nuclear-armed powerhouse, Russia. You have to think that the Israel-Russia agreement over Syria is now approaching thin ice because Russia, as it attempts to establish even more of a presence in the Middle East, will become very reliant on our relationship with Bashar al-Assad. And they are dictating the terms of the relationship, by the way, to Assad. But clearly, Russia wants to maintain good relations with Assad and have free reign in Syria and have a warm water port there in the Mediterranean. That's exactly what's happening. So as we close here, okay, prophetic implications. We've talked often here on the newscast, in particular on our live streams, about the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, and that coming war of Gog and Magog. Funny name, I know, if you've never heard about it, but I encourage you to check out the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, which, long story short, talks about an invasion in, quote, the latter days, a confederation of nations that comes against Israel that ultimately perishes on the mountains of Israel, by the way, where God Almighty directly intervenes to protect his land, the land of Israel. But many believe that Russia is at the head of that invasion force, which also involves Iran and perhaps Turkey, many believe, and other nations coming against Israel again in the latter days. So Ukraine continues to unfold, of course, but watch Russia's moves in the Middle East, folks, which are playing out right now in real time, the prophetic chess pieces moving on the board. Keep all of this in prayer. The great thing about it is God Almighty still, yes, still sits on the throne. I mentioned the outcome of that Gog-Magog war as detailed in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Needless to say, it does not end so well for Israel's enemies. So take heart. I'll leave you with that. Until tomorrow, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.